In this video, we're going to learn how to find the electric field of a uniformly charged sphere. And so let's start this out by saying that we have a sphere which has radius r and a uniform charge density rho. So recall that rho is just the charge per unit volume. And in this case, rho is a constant. So, and let's say that it's positive. So it's positive rho. So let's say initially that we want to find the electric field somewhere inside the sphere. So at a, at a radius r, little r, that's smaller than this big r. How do we do that? Well, this is a problem which has a lot of symmetry. And in particular, it's got spherical symmetry. So this means that we can use Gauss's law to find out what the electric field is. And Gauss's law says just says that the electric flux phi e is equal to the enclosed charge divided by the permittivity. And I'm gonna say that the permittivity inside and outside the sphere is epsilon naught. So the permittivity is just epsilon naught. And phi e, remember, is just the electric flux, which is equal to the integral of the amount of electric field pointing out of some Gaussian surface. So some Gaussian surface integrated over the surface area. So the first question is, what kind of Gaussian surface do we want to use here? Well, because it's got, because this situation has spherical symmetry, we're going to want to use a sphere. And we're going to put our second sphere inside our first one, because initially we want the electric field inside the sphere. And let's just extend this radius a little bit so that our Gaussian surface has the radius that we're interested in finding the electric field at, which is little r. And so to start, we're gonna solve for the electric flux. So the electric flux is just equal to the integral of E dot dA over the Gaussian surface. I'll just say a little, give it a little a there. And so what is E dot dA here? Well, our Gaussian surface, the area vector is pointing straight out. So it's pointing radially away from the center. And similarly, our electric field, because this has spherical symmetry, it's either going to be pointing straight out or straight in. So there's, there's no other option. So the electric field is pointing in the same direction as the area vector. And if we give it a negative sign, we can say it's pointing in the opposite direction. So E dot dA, E dot dA is just equal to the magnitude, the signed magnitude of E, if you like, times our little area element, dA. And this electric field might be a function of the radius. We, we don't, we actually don't know at this point. So I'll just keep that as E as a function of R. But we can integrate this. So if we integrate e dot dA, which is just now e times, or e as a function of r times dA over our Gaussian surface area, then because we're integrating over a surface which has a constant value of r, then this electric field we can pull out front of this integral. And so this is equal to e of r times the integral of dA over the surface area. And this is just adding up all the little pieces of area of our Gaussian surface. So this is just equal to A. And so we have our electric field times A. And this is the area of our Gaussian surface, which is equal to, so E of R times four pi little r squared, which is just the surface area of a sphere of our Gaussian surface. And so now we just need to find the charge enclosed. And so what is the charge enclosed of this system? Well, it's not the charge of the entire sphere because we're only, our Gaussian surface only covers some of the charge. So this is just our charge density times the volume of our Gaussian surface. And it's not the volume of our entire surface because our Gaussian surface is only taking some subset of that charge. And so this is rho times four thirds pi little r cubed, where this four thirds pi r cubed is the volume of our Gaussian surface. It's the equation for the volume of a sphere. And so now we can solve our overall problem with Gauss's law. 
So our electric flux is equal to the charge enclosed divided by epsilon naught. So our flux is just, we, we just solved for it, E of R, so we don't know what the electric field is as a function of R, times 4 pi R squared is equal to rho times 4 thirds pi little r cubed divided by epsilon naught. And so this r squared cancels with an r squared over here. The 4 and the pi cancel with a 4 and a pi. And we're left with the electric field as a function of r is equal to r rho times little r divided by 3 epsilon naught. And this is valid for our little r is less than big R, so we are inside our insulating or our uniformly charged sphere. So this is our electric field. Now, what about for the electric field outside the sphere? Well, let's redraw our charged sphere. So we've got our uniform charge distributed all the way throughout the sphere. And this charge density is constant, it's just some value rho, and it's positive rho because it's positive charge. So we can solve this the exact same way with Gauss's law. So the electric flux is equal to the charge enclosed divided by epsilon naught. The trick now is we want to choose a Gaussian surface that's outside of our sphere. So if I were to draw one, I might draw it like this. So our Gaussian surface has some radius r which is bigger than the radius of our charged sphere. And so this captures a, an electric field which will be an electric flux which is outside of the sphere. So let's start by solving for the electric flux. So we know from the definition that the electric flux is just equal to the integral of E dot dA over our Gaussian surface. And here, that's just the surface that I've drawn in blue. So first, what is E dot dA? Well, dA is just the little area vector that points out of our surface. So it is just pointing radially away. And because this problem has radial symmetry, we know that the electric field will also be pointing out of the surface. So both of them have the same direction. So just as before, E dot dA is equal to our magnitude E times dA. And so this is much easier to integrate. And as before, you know, the electric field might be a function of R, we really don't know, little r. And so we're going to leave it like this, E is a function of R times dA. And so to find the flux, all we need to do is integrate this, so E as a function of R times dA. But because over our integration surface, so over the surface that we're integrating over, R is constant, so we're not changing R. So this electric field, just like before, can get pulled out to the front. And this is integrating over our surface area A. And this is beautiful. This is my favorite kind of integral. It's the one you don't even have to think about. The, if we add up all of our little area elements dA, this is just equal to the total surface area of our Gaussian surface. And the surface area of our, I'll, I'll call this A Gauss, A Gauss. Our Gaussian surface area is just the surface area of a sphere, which is 4 pi little r squared. And so our total flux is our unknown electric field at some distance r times 4 pi r squared. So now all that's left is to find the charge enclosed. Now in this case, our Gaussian surface, this blue sphere, and let's make it a little bit more of a sphere. <laughs> so this blue sphere is encapsulating all of our charge. So it doesn't depend on the radius little r. It only depends on the total amount of charge inside this charged sphere. And so this is just equal to rho times the volume of our sphere. And this is, I'll, I'll call it our charge, so V charge, the volume of our charge. And this is just 4 thirds times pi times big R cubed. So this is the volume of a sphere. And this is the volume 
of the amount of charge that we have. So this is the charge enclosed. So finally, we can set these two equal to each other. The electric flux is equal to the charge enclosed divided by epsilon naught. And we get that E as a function of little r, which is the radius of our Gaussian surface, times four pi little r squared is equal to rho times four thirds thirds pi big R cubed, all divided by epsilon naught. And so the four pi's cancel. So there's a four, there's a pi, but the R squared here doesn't cancel. So this little r and this big R are not the same thing. Big R is the radius of our charged sphere. Little r is the radius of our Gaussian surface. So if we divide both sides by R squared, so we've got a one over R squared now over here, our electric field as a function of little r is just rho r cubed divided by three epsilon naught times r squared. And so this is valid for our little r greater than big R. So our electric field outside of the insulating sphere. Now we can change this around. So if we Instead of expressing things in terms of R, we express things in terms of the volume of the inside sphere. Then this just becomes rho times the volume divided by four pi epsilon naught R squared. And this rho times the volume, this is just the total charge on our sphere, which I'll call Q. And so this you might notice is exactly the same as the equation for the electric field of a point charge. So any sort of spherical charge distribution, when we are outside that sphere, the electric field just looks like the electric field of a point charge, where the value of that point charge is just the total charge inside the sphere. Finally, I'd like to thank all my patrons on Patreon. Your support is greatly appreciated, and it is you who makes these videos possible. If you aren't currently a patron, to get early video access, behind the scenes footage, exclusive content, and join a like minded community, click the link on screen or in the description below. Thanks for watching.